for decades, honestly, the distinct physical appearance of Papua New Guineans has, well, it's really puzzled scientists. It often suggested this idea of a first out of Africa journey, something totally unique from other non-African populations, you know, a real genetic mystery, almost challenging what we thought we knew about human origins. Right. It was a persistent idea. So today we're diving into a really groundbreaking new DNA study. And this one uses advanced AI, uh, artificial intelligence, and it reveals something pretty surprising. Turns out their deep genetic roots actually make them a sister group to other Asian populations. Exactly, which is quite a shift. So that distinctive look, it seems it's primarily adaptation, not some separate ancient lineage from way back. That's what the evidence strongly points towards now. Our mission then in this deep dive is to unpack these, well, really paradigm-shifting findings. We want to understand how this cutting-edge AI is literally rewriting parts of our human story. And importantly, give you the shortcut to understanding these fascinating insights into one of humanity's most unique populations. And what's truly fascinating here, as you said, is how their physical appearance, which, you know, can be quite distinct, sometimes even sharing traits we associate more with sub-Saharan African populations, how that appearance led to this hypothesis. The one about a much earlier separate wave out of Africa? Precisely. That they might have come from a completely different earlier migration. And this new research, it just directly and I think quite elegantly addresses that long-standing question. It offers a resolution that really does reshape how we view human migration patterns. Yeah, and we're not just talking about like slightly adjusting old theories here. This deep dive is based on a major new DNA study just published in Nature Communications. We also looked at a great summary over on Science Daily. It's this amazing blend of ancient history and super modern science, giving us some really profound insights into ancestry. Indeed it is. For, gosh, decades, the puzzle really centered on what was often called the first out of Africa hypothesis. And early archaeological findings, well, they played a big role in fueling this idea. Right. The date seemed really old. Incredibly old. We're talking about a human occupation sites found in places like New Guinea and the wider area called Sahul that included Australia and Tasmania back when sea levels were lower. And these sites date back maybe... 50,000, even 60,000 years ago. Wow, that's ancient. Older than some European sites, right? Exactly. Older than some of the earliest widely accepted human sites in Europe. So naturally, it led many researchers to think, well, maybe the ancestors of Papua New Guineans took a very early coastal route, perhaps moving rapidly through India, Southeast Asia in a distinct migration wave, maybe one that even predated the main one that populated the rest of Eurasia. Okay, so the archaeology, the physical evidence on the ground was suggesting one story, this really old, maybe separate migration. But then genetic analysis came along. Did the genes back up this idea of a separate earlier wave? Ah. Uh. And that's precisely where the story got complicated. It created a kind of scientific paradox. When geneticists started looking at the DNA itself, specifically things like mitochondrial DNA, which you only get from your mother, and why chromosome DNA only passed down from the father, they weren't finding clear signals. No clear signals supporting that distinct earlier migration. Not as the main source of ancestry, no. Instead, these analyses, time and again, suggested genetic connections to other non-African populations especially those in Asia. So a conflict. Archaeology hinting at one thing, genetics hinting at another. Exactly. You have the archaeological digs suggesting this incredibly early, maybe separate path. But then the major genetic markers were pointing to a more shared lineage with other Eurasians. It left the genetic origin of Papua New Guineans, as the Science Daily article really nicely puts it, unresolved for a very long time. Researchers were left wondering, you know, was there a tiny early group that just didn't leave a strong genetic trace? Or were we maybe misinterpreting the genetic signals we did have? And that's where this new study really makes its mark, right? Bringing in these heavy duty analytical tools to try and crack this paradox. They used high quality genomic data, like a much more complete look at the whole DNA picture. Yes, much more comprehensive data. And crucially, these AI-powered models to compare different demographic scenarios. Can you unpack that a bit? What are these demographic scenarios and why is using AI here such a big deal? Right. So demographic scenarios are basically hypothetical histories. They're stories, if you like, of how a population might have behaved over thousands of years. Did it grow quickly? Did it shrink dramatically, go through a bottleneck? Did it move? Did it mix with other groups? These AI models they let researchers test lots of these different possibilities against the actual genetic data. So you can simulate different histories and see which one best fits the DNA we see today. Exactly. Before, 
analyzing these complex scenarios was really, really computationally intensive. You often had to make simplifying assumptions. But these advanced AI tools, especially things like neural networks, they can sift through enormous amounts of genomic data. They can compare how well different complex demographic histories match the genetic variations we actually observe in Papua New Guineans, and they can do it with, frankly, unprecedented accuracy. And this is where the story gets really interesting, because it allowed them to look again at those very genetic signals that had previously hinted at a unique early divergence. Okay, so they fire up these powerful AI tools, feed them the high-quality genomic data. Mm -hmm. What was the big reveal? What did the AI say about the core genetic lineage of Papua New Guineans? Were, were they actually this distinct, separate first out of Africa group after all? Well, no. The AI models pretty clearly demonstrated that Papua New Guineans are, genetically speaking, a sister group to other Asian populations. A sister group, meaning? Yeah, meaning they share a common ancestry. They branched off from the same major out of Africa event that also gave rise to all other non-African groups. And the timing for that main event looks to be around uh, 62,400 years ago, roughly. So the idea that a separate, much earlier first out of Africa migration was needed to explain their main origins, it seems that might not be necessary at all based on this analysis. Wow. Okay, that is a fundamental shift. It really changes their position on the human family tree, doesn't it? Yeah. Puts them firmly within that broader Eurasian lineage, not on some older separate branch. That's the implication, yes. It's a significant reinterpretation. So, okay, if their deep genetic roots are clearly shared with other Asian groups, despite that very distinct physical appearance. Yeah. How do we explain that appearance then, the darker skin, the hair textures you mentioned, if it's not a sign of a separate ancient migration? Yeah, and this is a critical point the study helps clarify. The lead author, Dr. Mayuk Mandal, suggests that their unique physical features probably arose mostly from strong natural selection after their ancestors settled in the region. Adaptations to the local environment. Exactly. Think about the environment in Papua New Guinea, intense tropical climate, high UV radiation, humidity. These features could well be adaptations sculpted by those pressures over tens of thousands of years. It's actually a great example of what we call convergent evolution. Where different groups independently evolve similar traits because they face similar challenges. Precisely. Different populations can end up looking somewhat similar in response to similar environments, even if their deeper genetic ancestry took different paths initially. So appearance in this case. Well, it turned out to be a bit misleading about their deep genetic divergence, a powerful lesson in how evolution works, really. That makes a lot of sense. Natural selection doing its thing. Okay, but let's go back to those genetic signals. If they are a sister group to other Asians, what about that earlier divergence signal, the one that methods like uh, relative cross coalescent and rate curves were picking up? What was causing that signal if it wasn't an ancient separate migration? Right, and this is perhaps the real aha moment of the study. It really highlights the power of the AI modeling they used. As we touched on, previous ideas often relied on those methods, like RCCR curves, relative cross-coalescent rate. Just to explain for everyone, RCCR is basically a tool geneticists use to trace back the family tree of genes, effectively. It looks at when gene lineages from different populations merge or coalesce back to a common ancestor. If that coalescence happens faster, it often suggests the population split apart earlier in time. Okay, so a faster coalescence implies an older split. And these curves were showing a faster coalescence and earlier divergence for Papua New Guineans from African populations compared to other non-Africans. Yes, that was a key piece of evidence supporting the first out-of-Africa idea for them. It looked like they'd been separate for longer. And the new AI models, yeah, they completely reinterpreted that signal. They did. The researchers found something crucial about their demographic history. The ancestors of Papua New Guineans, after they first migrated and settled in the region, went through a really dramatic and prolonged population bottleneck. A bottleneck, meaning their population size crashed. Crashed and stayed very low for a very long time. Their numbers likely dropped sharply after reaching Papua New Guinea and remained exceptionally small for thousands upon thousands of years. And crucially, unlike many other groups in Eurasia, they didn't experience those huge farming-driven population booms. Ah, the agricultural revolution effect, mm -hmm. the one that massively increased populations in Europe and Asia starting maybe 10,000 years ago. Exactly. That boom reshaped the genetic landscape elsewhere, but it seems it didn't happen to nearly the same extent or in the same way 
for the ancestors of modern Papua New Guineans. Okay, wait, so are you saying their unique history, this severe bottleneck followed by slower, more isolated growth, actually created a kind of misleading genetic signature, one that looked like evidence of an ancient separate migration, but wasn't? That is precisely what the study proposes, and the AI models back it up beautifully. This unique demographic trajectory, the strong bottleneck plus much lower subsequent growth rates, created genetic patterns that, if you analyze them with older, perhaps less sophisticated models, could easily look like they resulted from mixing with some unknown, much earlier population, or just diverging much earlier. So the RCCR curves were picking up on the effect of the bottleneck, not an actual earlier split time. Essentially, yes. The study's AI models show how a stronger bottleneck combined with lower growth can mimic the signal of an earlier population separation in those RCCR analyses. It seems the bottleneck distorted the estimation of those coalescence rates, making it appear as though the populations diverged much earlier than they really did. So it wasn't necessarily a separate migration event causing that signal. It was a profound demographic squeeze that lasted millennia. That is absolutely fascinating. It's a powerful reminder of just how complex these genetic signals can be and how crucial the analytical tools and the demographic models are for interpretation. Can you give us a sense of scale? Just how severe was this bottleneck compared to, say, the ancestors of Europeans or East Asians who also came out of Africa? Yes, the AI model they found to be the best fit. They called it Model A. It provides some really stark comparisons. It really underscores how unique the Papua New Guinea ancestral experience was. The model inferred an incredibly severe bottleneck for them, reducing their effective population size down to maybe only 674 individuals. Wow, fewer than 700 people effectively contributing genes for a long period. For a potentially very long period, yes. Oh, I... Now compare that to Europeans, they also experienced a bottleneck, sure. But the model suggests they recovered to an effective size of roughly 3,500, or East Asians around 1,700 or 1,800. So that drastic, prolonged reduction in numbers for the PNG ancestors, combined with those lower growth rates afterwards, largely without the explosive agricultural growth seen elsewhere that really set their genetic history apart. And the timing from the model. When did these splits happen? The model suggests that the ancestors of all these out of Africa groups, including Papua New Guineans, diverged from African populations around that 62,400 year mark we mentioned. Then Europeans and East Asians diverged from the lineage leading to Papua New Guineans later, maybe around 51,000 years ago for Europeans, and 46,000 years ago for East Asians relative to PNG ancestors. And interestingly, that timing for settlement in the New Guinea region around 46,000 years ago fits really well with the archaeological estimates for arrival in Sahul. It lines up. Okay, so if those farming booms in Europe and East Asia led to different genetic patterns, why didn't agriculture have the same explosive effect in Papua New Guinea? You mentioned they did develop agriculture I'm there. Saying. That's an excellent point, and it's key to their distinct path. Yes, agriculture did develop independently in the New Guinea highlands, things like cultivating taro, yams, bananas, sugarcane. It's one of the world's independent centers of plant domestication. However, it seems this type of cultivation generally didn't support the same scale of population density or lead to the same kind of explosive growth as, say, large-scale cereal grain agriculture like wheat in the Near East or rice in East Asia did elsewhere. Why might that be? The environment. That's likely a big part of it. Factors could include the really challenging, often mountainous terrain, which might have kept populations more fragmented. Maybe the nature of innovating with root crops versus grains played a role. Perhaps it fostered a more localized, maybe even sustainable approach to resources that just didn't drive those massive demographic booms seen elsewhere. So this slower, more constrained growth following that incredibly tight bottleneck is what left such a unique and, as we now understand, potentially misinterpreted genetic imprint. Okay, so we have the shared out of Africa origin, the sister relationship to Asians, the bottleneck, the slower growth, the adaptation. It's already a complex story. Yeah. But there's another layer, isn't there? We can't talk about Papua New Guinean genetics without mentioning the Denisovans. Absolutely not. You're right, it adds another fascinating dimension. The Papua New Guinean genome carries a really significant percentage of Denisovan DNA, much higher than most other populations globally. And this Denisovan DNA came from interbreeding, right, as their ancestors migrated? Almost certainly, yes. It likely came from interbreeding events with Denisovans, who were another distinct group of ancient humans related to Neanderthals, probably somewhere in Southeast Asia or Wallacea or even Sahul itself as the ancestors of modern Papua New Guineans migrated through or into the region.
The study's best fit model actually estimated this Denisovan introgression, that's the mixing of genes into the PNG population, at about 3.23%, happening perhaps around 31,000 years ago. So even with this new clarity on their main out-of-Africa lineage, yeah. their ancestry is still complex, still includes these ancient interactions. Definitely. It confirms their ancestry is complex. It integrates these ancient encounters even within this clearer picture of their primary lineage. And to be fair, while this study really helps resolve the first out of Africa question for the main ancestral line, the authors do acknowledge that they can't completely rule out a very small contribution, maybe less than 5%, from some other earlier out of Africa group, or maybe an unknown Eurasian outgroup. But the critical point, the main takeaway, is that such a contribution isn't needed to explain that RCCR shift anymore. The bottleneck and the slower growth seem to do that job quite effectively. Right. The main story holds without needing that extra layer. Mm -hmm. Okay, fascinating stuff. Let's try and bring it all together for everyone listening. What are the absolute core takeaways from this deep dive. Okay, first, the big one. Despite their unique appearance, Papua New Guineans are genetically a sister group to other Asian populations. That's key. They share a common ancestry stemming from the same major out-of-Africa event. And it was advanced AI models that were really instrumental in untangling this complex history and revealing that connection. And the huge aha moment, the real paradigm shift, is that those genetic signals that look like evidence for a separate first out of Africa migration, yeah. they were actually an echo of their unique demographic past. It wasn't about a separate journey from Africa initially, but about what happened after they arrived. That dramatic, long population bottleneck, plus much lower growth rates, which was very different from the farming fuel booms elsewhere in Eurasia. Precisely. And third, let's not forget the Denisovans. We're reminded that the significant chunk of Denisovan DNA in their genome confirms just how complex and interwoven human ancestry is. It highlights that our history isn't neat lines, it's tangled web of migrations, adaptations, and yes, ancient interspecies mixing, even as we clarify the main branches. So zooming out a bit, if we connect this study to the wider field of human genetic research, what are the bigger implications? How does this change how scientists might approach genetic data from other populations now? Well, it's a pretty significant challenge to some previous interpretations, I'd say. It really highlights the limitations of relying solely on older methods like those RCCR curves without fully considering the specific demographic history of the population you're studying. It emphatically shows that if you don't account for things like severe, long bottlenecks or unusual growth patterns, you could easily misread subtle genetic signals. You might think you see evidence of ancient migrations or ghost populations that aren't actually there. So context is everything. Yeah. You can't just apply one model to everyone. Exactly. It really emphasizes that we need to be incredibly careful about assuming a single demographic story fits all human groups. And it shows how vital these advanced computational tools like AI are for disentangling these complexities. Honestly, this study serves as both a vital cautionary tale and, I think, a new benchmark for how future research needs to approach these questions. And it really underscores the power of the technology, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. The AI, the neural networks, they seem like the key puzzle solvers here. Absolutely. This work truly highlights the transformative role of cutting-edge tech in resolving scientific debates that have lingered for decades. These AI-powered tools can pick up on subtle patterns, they can test really complex what-if scenarios about the past that older, simpler methods might have just missed or worse misinterpreted. It's opening up completely new ways to understand our shared and clearly very intricate past. It's a testament to how far the science has advanced. So thinking about our listeners, what does all this mean for you? Well, I think it means that the story of human migration, our collective story, is definitely not a finished book. It's more like a living document constantly being revised and refined. And every single population, no matter how remote or how unique they might seem, holds a crucial and often surprising piece of our shared genetic tapestry. The journey of humanity is just far more nuanced, much more dynamic, and full of unexpected twists than we often imagine. It keeps revealing new layers of complexity and connection. That's well put. And this deep dive, it's shown us how something like a powerful, sustained or population bottleneck can echo down through millennia in our genes, creating a signal that for a long time looked like something else entirely, like an ancient separate migration. But it also leaves us with a really important, maybe provocative question. If a severe bottleneck can create such a convincing genetic illusion, what other subtle ghost populations or hidden historical events might we still be misinterpreting in the human genome or maybe haven't even uncovered yet, even with our most advanced tools today? Mm -hmm. 
The full story of humanity, it really seems, remains this gloriously tangled web. It's woven from ancient love stories, powerful adaptations to diverse environments, and these hidden demographic twists and turns. And it's always just waiting, it seems, for the next deep dive to reveal a little bit more.